Hello everybody and welcome back to another video. Today we'll be taking a look at a Project Euler question and it will be question number 95. So let's get started with this question. This question is a very nice question which incorporates many different ideas um, just in programming in general so it, it, it's definitely one of my favourite ones. Um, I, I'll let you have a quick read of the question and um, feel free to pause and um, think about how you would solve this before I jump to the solution. Okay, so essentially, I, mean, I, I, I wouldn't bother rereading the entire thing, but um, essentially, we want there is some function of a number, and maybe let's call this f then, which gives um, the sum of the factors of that number, right? And we essentially want to know um, for which numbers is um, is n f of n f of f of n and then eventually this goes back to f k times of n for which numbers is this set a cycle so f k of n is equal to n for some k right so th th this essentially um, is an equivalent representation of the problem and it, it, might, it might look a bit intimidating but it, it, trust me it's, it's it's not too bad essentially um uh, we have several different parts to this um code First of all, we need to come up with some representation of this function. And once we're done with that, we kind of take a graph theory approach to solving the problem. Essentially, um, I, I, after we're done with um, I, uh, okay, after we're done with coding this function f of n, we're going to have several numbers, and I'll represent them with nodes. And some numbers um, would connect to other numbers. For example, um, if, in their example, if this number represents 220, then 220 would connect to 284, and then 284 would connect back to 220. And then uh, we essentially can draw some sort of network where multiple of these numbers are connected. And now our problem is equivalent to, effectively, we need to find the longest length cycle within this network. Right? That will basically give us our answer. And um, it, it, we want one more um, some restriction is that the smallest number um, does not exceed 1 million. So the, the, that's just so we have an um, upper bound in the end, so we can actually compute the amount of obviously. So the, that's essentially um, a high-level overview of what exactly is going to be in the code. So just to recap, first of all, we come up with some function, f of n, which calculates the sum of the factors of a number. Then the second main part is we represent each number with a node, and then we see which numbers are connected to other which other numbers, and then um, after that, the third part is essentially um, we need to find the longest length cycle within um, w w within this structure, and the structure is the graph. Okay, I hope that all makes sense. Um, and now let's go back and le let's analyze the program in a bit more depth. So um, essentially, the, this is the function f of n, which um, r r returns the Sorry, no, um, yeah, the, the, this f of n is something else, we'll come back to it, but um, the, the first thing which we have is we want to create our f of n, right? We want to create a function which returns the sum of the factors of that number. And th there's actually a really convenient way to do this. Um, essentially, what we do is we iterate um, over each number from 1 till 1 million, um, because th 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 that's our largest number. And then what we do is, um, for each of those numbers, let's say i, then um, all multiples of that number, we would increment the sum of their factors by 1. So i, 2, i, 3, I would all get incremented by 1. And this basically guarantees that each number would be incremented exactly the number of times they have factors. So, um, and as you can see, I've gone up until n divided by 2 plus 1. Just so, um, the, the, the largest possible factor any number can have is 500,000, right? So just so we include 500,000 inside this um, sum. One more thing worth noting is that the number itself does not count as it's a, it's a, as a factor. Thus, um, for example, if we were to consider um, 500,001, 500,001 wouldn't be a factor of itself. Thus, um, there's no need to um, go through numbers from half a million to one million, because none of them count in their own factors. Okay, and then um, the, 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 this code's um, essentially just what I described. We increment all their multiples by um, 
but by i. But i is um, a, a number which we're trying to um, which we're trying to um, calculate it for. So this just gives us the sum of the factors. So for example, um, maybe I'll just run this for um, a thousand, um, just so um, just so we're clear on what exactly is going on. So essentially, um, I'll just print off some factors, um, just so we can see a quick demonstration. Okay, ignore the ignore the numbers so it's the end, but they're the latest part of the program. Um, but the very first line is just what we can start with at the moment. So, for example, um, a number nine returns four, and this makes sense since the factors of nine are one, three, and nine. We ignore nine, so just one and three. When we add them, we get four. And one more, ten. Ten gives eight. So this corresponds to one plus two plus five, and that makes sense. Now we have certain numbers such as six, and six is one number. We also have twenty-eight. Um, and you might notice something uh, a bit strange about these two numbers, and a few other numbers. These numbers are called perfect numbers. So what this essentially means is um, f of that number is equal to that number, which corresponds to a cycle of length 1. And now, um, since we know that the answer is at least 2 from the, from the example they provided, we can ignore perfect numbers. Because perfect numbers might mess up our looping. Um, for example, if, if we were to... Um, if for four perfect numbers, what would essentially happen is it would correspond to an infinite loop. Okay, so n n now that we've done that part, um, let's go on to the next part. Sorry, uh, I, I, I realized that inside the recording, um, it wasn't actually visible um, which numbers I was referring to. But I was referring to 9 giving 4 as the output, 10 giving 8 as the output, and 6 and 28 giving themselves as the output. Okay? So n n n n now that that's clear, um, let let's move on to the next part of the code. Okay, so um, after this, uh, these couple of lines essentially um, have... I, I, I created another dictionary, which is reverse sum factors. So, um, Essentially, what this corresponds to is um, some factors maps n to fn, but this would essentially map n to f inverse n. So, what does this actually mean? This means that we're returning the numbers which would give that particular number as their sum factors. So, for example, um, we saw in in this example that a bunch of numbers give one, and no surprises, these numbers which give one are the prime numbers because the only factor which prime numbers have is 1, 2 doesn't count, like itself doesn't count. So if we were to um, print the reverse sum factors 1, we would get all the prime numbers. If we were to get, um, if we were to do reverse sum factors 2, we would get all the numbers which are the multiple of 2 prime numbers, and etc. So um, that's reverse sum factors, it will be useful later on in our code. Okay, and now um, it, th this line is a bit complicated to understand, but um, I mean, but just bear with me, if you understood everything so far, then you should be able to understand this one too. Essentially, um, certain numbers we don't want to be factored in into our amicable chain, chains property. So, um, I mean, as I discussed, perfect numbers shouldn't be counted for. 1 is just an edge case as well, so that shouldn't be counted for. Thus, um, this, particular, um, this particular list corresponds to all the perfect numbers. This particular list corresponds to 1. So we add both of them, and we concatenate into numbers to be removed. And this particular list corresponds to all the numbers such that their sum of factors is greater than the number itself. Because, um, for example, uh, a number like 36, its sum of factors is much, much greater than 36. So that number shouldn't be counted for inside our total. So we label all these numbers to, rem to be removed. And j j just to quickly show some examples, we have 418 because the, the, that has a, a really large number of um, factors and we we'll, we'll, we'll have a bunch of we'll go through them but all of these numbers are numbers which are to be removed and if, 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 if we go later on then we'll also see um, the perfect numbers 6, 28 and 496 okay so all of these numbers would then get removed so for number and removed we essentially carry out f and um, f of n, in this case, just corresponds to um, de deleting that number from the 
from the sum factors array. And if, if the number's in reverse sum factors, then we also need to get rid of it inside sum factors, reverse sum factors. Okay, so now that we've got rid of all the bad numbers, we're only left with um, the good numbers. And these good numbers are numbers which can form algebraic chains. So um, now that we've carried this out, um, if we were to print sum factors again, we would essentially see um, we would see all the numbers which correspond to um, could correspond to chains, right? Okay. So um, at the moment, that all, all, all the numbers are these numbers in sum factors. Because 220 gives 284, 284 gives 220, 562 gives 284. Okay, so now um, if, if we just quickly go back to our graph, then the, 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 we've essentially completed step two of the process as well now. Now finally, we just need to go back to step three, and then we'll be finished. So for step three, um, so step three, it, essentially what we do is, for each number inside this dictionary, um, we carry out a loop. And what this loop looks like is um, we start off with a certain number, and then while um, while the next number is not equal to our original number, we continue updating the current number and the next number to being the next number, and then some of the factors of the next number, right? So the, the, this essentially corresponds to traversing the grid, okay? And um, if, if you're having um, a bit of difficulties understanding this, perhaps just draw out the graph. And remember that each circle corresponds to a number, and an arrow um, outgoing from that circle corresponds to f of that number, i.e. the number of factors of that number. So um, th th this essentially means that, that this will give us um, the total length, um, this will give us the total cycles, and um, there's one small exception which we have to consider, is what if there is some sort of cycle? So for example, 562 would correspond to a cycle. Because 562 would then um, bounce to 520, which would then bounce to 284, and then it would bounce back to 220 and 284. Um, and it will never actually return back to 562. So if there's a cycle, which means if, if there's a number which we've seen twice, then we essentially break, because then it's not a valid sequence, right? And then finally, um, if, if the number is equal to our starting number, we append it to a list called cycle. And then the final thing we should do is we just print off all the cycles. Okay, so now I'll, I'll run the code for one million numbers. Like I'll delete the above print statements, otherwise the code will be a bit too slow. Um, printing off like millions of numbers, like, quite literally millions of numbers. Okay, and now um, we just need to change this one, two, three, change it to a million, and now let's run the code. Okay, it takes a couple of seconds, but um, that's okay. Okay, so this is basically our final output, right? And essentially, um, th th this uh, well, we can clearly see that these are all the cycles, and most of them are of length two. There is one of length five, which is here, but then we can see that the highest is actually um, this particular cycle, right? And this particular cycle, if if we just count it up then that will be our final answer. Which, um, if, if, if we were to just print the cycle, as well as the length of the cycle, then we can essentially see our maximum answer. Let's run it again. Okay. So this essentially corresponds to a length of 28. And that's basically the answer to this particular question. The answer is 28. So um, I really hope you enjoyed watching this video. Hopefully you learned something new about maybe graph theory, maybe um, the way we generated the factors. It was, it was a really nice problem incorporating many different ideas. And if you enjoyed this video, please be sure to leave a like and subscribe for more similar competitive programming videos. Thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you another time in another video. Bye.